Hello, in this video we're going to look at the Riemann Stilts Integral and I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly but that's how I'm going to say it. Now 20 or 30 years earlier than, than 1894 Riemann developed his theory on you know uh, integration and then Stilts developed this uh, more general approach and then within 10 years LeBeg introduced his or discovered his theory. But what we're going to do here is go briefly over what Riemann Stilts integration is and why statisticians use it quite a bit. It's a it ends up being a, a unifying approach, you know, for notation, regardless of your if your variable is discrete or continuous. So let's just proceed. So this is the general notation. It's the integral from A to B of f of x d gx. Now the Riemann integral instead of g of x they, you would just say x so f of x dx but we're doing it in re with respect to g of x and so g f and g are real valued functions and this integral is also like Riemann defined as the limit of an approximating sum. Okay, So to do that we need to create a partition and then let the mesh of that partition go to zero. And so basically what that means is the largest difference between any of the points goes to zero. That's what it means by the mesh goes to zero. And this is this is it. This is the um, the approximating sum. Now this is almost identical to the Riemann sum instead of using g of x of i plus 1 and g of x of i we would just use x of i plus 1 and x of i but for the Riemann stilts integration you put the function value in there um, and this c now there's different ways you can do Riemann integration where you can use the lower bound the upper bound or or pick some point in this interval and so we're going to use the the approach where the C of I is some value in this interval here and it's you know it's F because that's what we're integrating so now let's look at it specifically why statisticians like it oh and and that's really all I'm gonna say about it there's so many videos out there with theorems and and lemmas and corollaries and conditions and problems and so there's a vast literature on this that you can uh, I'm gonna just let you research it on your own so as uh, so in example one we're gonna let X be continuous we're gonna let cap F be the CDF of X and of course the density is the derivative of the CDF and now let's find the expected value of X so in uh, Riemann Stilts notation it's this and then um, using this formula it becomes this now instead of calling it C I called it script X now remember script X is a value between um, the in the interval XI to XI plus 1 and I kept it script x instead of c mainly just because that was our function and you'll see why in a second but you could just put ci there too um, now if we look at this second piece here then by the mean value theorem this piece is equal to this piece where ci is some value in this interval and xi or and xi plus one are the endpoints of that interval in a given partition. Now here, um, script XI and CI are both points in this interval. Now they don't have to be the same point. They're just any points in this interval. And as a reminder, this is our partition. But as we go to infinity, the difference between these two points goes to zero. So the remember the partition, I mean the mesh goes to zero. So even though these may be different points, they end up 
converging to the same point that whatever the, you know as those approach the same value so this ends up being this and then this is just some small dx and that's actually the notation for Riemann integration which is just this and 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 that's what we expected so if we have a continuous variable and we said what's the expected value of x this is the way we'd calculate it it's x times its function of x dx and so Riemann stilts integration or notation is actually what we expected to have as a statistician now let's look at it for a continuous I mean a discrete variable and so x is going to be discrete and it takes on these k values a1 through ak and we're going to let f be the cdf of this random variable okay and I don't want to flash too much here so this is the cdf of this random variable so it's a step function as we expected because it's discrete um, now the, the jump here is actually the probability that we observe A1 and then this jump is the probability we observe A2 so how can you write that in notationally and that is the probability of X equal to AI is this difference in CDF functions where this is the limit approaching from the left so let's if we look at 2 F of A2 is this value and f of a2 from the left limit is this so it ends up and then that difference is the the gap which is the probability that x equals a2 so now if we write it you know the expected value and I picked this because you know it's just look what we looked at for the continuous case the notation is exactly the same it's x of d of cap f of x and then notationally as a limiting sum as a you know approximating sum it's the same value so it's a hundred percent the same as what we wrote before where this script x is some value in this interval xi to xi plus one but if we look at this in more detail so we're going to kind of focus in this region because the rest will be, end up being the same if if the partition ends up being on the same you know within but or between points this difference is zero right because the value is constant so this difference is zero and and zero times x of i will be zero and it adds nothing to the sum so the only way that we can get something of value that contributes to the sum is if the points are on each side of a you know of a point that that the x variable can assume so now we have two points when the mesh when we refine the mesh meaning you know it gets a little bit smaller if it ends up being on the same side at zero if it's on this side at zero it's only if there's a difference does it contribute to this sum so in limit you know the intervals go small 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 and they approach this a2 and so this value which has to be between these intervals actually goes to that value a2 and this difference in limit approaches you know it's whatever this left limit is and this and this right limit so this limiting sum ends there's only k times does it add something to this sum and it's at it's actually at these k points and this value that is between those xi and xi plus one is the aj or the you know the value that it's it's surrounding and this limit is this difference it's you know the top limb the right limit minus the left limit but this right here is what we were calling probability so it's a probability of x equals aj well if we had a discrete random variable and I said how do you calculate the expected value of x this is the way we would do it we would take each value that it can assume take it times its probability add them all up and then that's the mean of xi and so 
we can use the same notation whether the variable is continuous or discrete and we get you know the correct value now I just use the expected value of X but really in a third example it could be anything it could be any function H of X and we would write it like this integrate it over whatever values we needed then notationally it would be it would become this if it were continuous then it's just f of x dx and if it was discrete then it becomes you know the values that it can assume times the probability of assuming that value yep so anyway that's all i have i hope you enjoyed it um, it's used quite a bit in statistical theory and uh, like the video if you did and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye